Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Lorenzo. I'm here just to do a quick review for hemostasis. Uh, this is going to be, this is actually part of the um, video that I was supposed to make for um, uh, hemod hemodynamics. Um, so this is part of that, okay? So basically we want to ask, what is hemostasis? The differences between hemostasis and thrombosis. Components of hemostasis, mechanisms of hemostasis, properties of endothelium, and the properties of platelets. Okay, that's going to be discussed in the um, the video that uh, the slides that have been provided by Dr. Ashwin. And so basically, I'm going to try to cover that in the uh, in the this lecture here. So in cases of normal blood vessels, we don't need and want any clot formation, right? So we we do not do need these clot formations in injured blood vessels. Okay. So basically, what this hemostasis and difference that with thrombosis. So hemostasis, just know, is phys is physiological, and it's normally in normal blood vessels. There's no clot formation. In case of injured blood vessels, we do have clots. And thrombosis is pathological. Clots is seen in normal blood vessels, unfortunately, in thrombosis, and in minor injuries, clot formation leads to blockade of blood vessels. Right. So hemostasis. Um, there's three things we have to take into consideration. Um, the blood vessels, the, the, what leads to hemostasis, maintains hemostasis, blood vessels, blood vessel wall, platelets, and formation of fibrin, right? For blood vessel wall, we have endothelium and subendothelial connective tissue. And then we have platelets, formation of fibrin. Fibrin is basically coagulation and the cascading ef um, effects. So the three important steps observed in here is vasoconstriction, primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, and fibrinolysis, right? So in um, this diagram that I tried to provide here, uh, we observe platelets. Uh, then we see pre the basement membrane. Uh, we see the basement, uh, the blood vessel wall, and the subendothelium connective tissue collagen. Right. So basically, what happens um, in that's in a normal situation, but what happens during a pathological uh, in a situation like an injury? So following injury, the first step we have vasoconstriction, is also known as reflex neurogenic reaction smooth muscles constrict and it is a reflex action endothelium release endothelin which acts on endothelin receptors a and b present in the smooth muscle then we observe formation of a clot which are primary hemostasis platelets come and contact with some subendothelial connective tissue due to damage and then we have endothelium produces von willebrand factor the von willebrand factor helps the platelets bind to the collagen and when platelets bind they become activated and they are activated as uh, this results in activated platelets change in shape and release their contents. An example of this, these contents are ADP, TX, A2, and serotonin, right? So remember that uses for ADP include activation for more platelets, therefore it brings more platelets to the site and causes more platelet aggregation. Whereas, um, whereas uh, TX, A2, and serotonin, they're responsible for producing vasoconstriction and platelet aggregation, right? So for now, we have, uh, so basically when this happens, we have the platelet aggregation it forms the primary hemostatic plug, right? The disadvantage of primary hemostatic plug is that not all, not all of them are strong, right? They are not able to control the bleeding completely. Therefore, we need a fibrin to bind these platelets uh, stronger and thus preventing bleeding, right? So we observe in, in, in damaged tissue, tissue factor 3, right? It's released from the subendothelium in the blood vessels that they grabbed that I showed before, right? The subendothelium releases tissue factor 3, and the role of tissue factor 3, it releases thrombin production, right? It makes thrombin production, and thrombin is responsible for the con conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. And when we have the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin, the fibrin gets deposited between platelets and seals the clot and makes it more uh, strong. Therefore, when this happens, when it, the sealing occurs, this is called the secondary hemostatic plug. Uh, the process is called secondary hemolysis, whereas the, the, the process of the creation of the primary hemostatic plug is called primary hemostasis. Um, now, let's go on to thrombosis. So basically, thrombosis is a pathological um, process which is an inappropriate activation of normal hemostatic process at least the formation of blood clots in normal vessels that are not even injured, right? The components of hemostasis, remember, is vascular cell wall, which is endothelium, subendothelial connective tissue, uh, platelets, remember, hemostasis thrombosis, and coagulation cascade leading to fibrin production. So phospholipid uh, complex expression, okay? Remember that uh, they need to make an appointment, uh, an appointment, uh, and these platelets act as a base for the clotting factors, right? Activation of 
the platelets and cells as a base, uh, adds as a base, and for coagulation cascade and resulting in a strong clot formation, right? Clot, remember, is formed to stop bleeding, but is stopped to prevent conclusion of the blood vessels, right? Cl remember that clots are used to stop bleeding, but eventually there's a time where the clot is stopped, clotting is stopped due to maintain normal blood flow, right? You don't want to you don't want to continue clotting where it completely occludes the artery. You'll die, you have necrosis. Um, so we have the presence of TPA, which is a tissue plasma activator. This is responsible for the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin, and plasmin is responsible for fibrinolysis. So, and fibrinolysis lets this to break down and prevention of total occlusion of clot by clots. So TPA are set into motion to limit the hemostatic plug, okay? It's basically, you know, maintains limitations. A normal endothelium has anti-thrombotic ability, right? It has abilities for, an it has antiplatelet, anticoagulant, and fibrinolytic ability. Basically, the antiplatelet effects, uh, basically as intact endothelium separates platelets and coagulation uh, proteins from subendothelium collagen, right? It separates it, so it doesn't prevent coagulation to occur. Remember, important thing, endothelium prevents platelet aggregation by what? PG PG12 or prostacycline and nitric oxide. These inhibit platelet aggregation uh, via and occurs and allows uh, vasodilation to occur. Remember, the most important thing is that prostacycline and uh, nitric oxide they prevent they prevent uh, platelet aggregation. Endothelium is respon respons uh, responsible for having antithrombotic properties. Anticoagulant effects have membrane-associated heparin-like molecules and uh, thr thrombomodulin, which is thrombin receptors. Right. Remember, the third process is fibrinolysis, and uh, basically. It's achieved by tissue type plasminogen activators, TPA. Okay, now let's proceed with endothelium. Endothelium has prothrombotic properties seen in endothelial injury. Exposure of subendothelial collagen uh, and release of von Willebrand factor leads to platelets, right? So basically, endothelium cells proceeds to tissue factor, which then proceeds to factor, then proceeds to extrinsic coagulation sequence. But remember, interleukin 1, Turner, and necrosis factor in bacterial endoth endotoxin is responsible for, endo for endothelial cells to. Uh, produce tissue factors, right? Okay, so platelets they have two types of granules alpha granule and uh, the dense bodies or bit or, de or delta granules. Remember, alpha granules or delta granules. Now, let's know the different roles of these granules. Alpha granule is adhesion molecule, P selection, P selectin. It has fibrinogen, fibronectin, factor 5 and 8, platelet factor 4, and PGF, TGF, beta. Delta granules have ADP, ATP, ionized calcium, and histamine, serotonin, and epinephrine. Excuse me there. Uh, platelet aggregation, ADP, and, th and thromboxane A2 secreted by platelets are important for platelet aggregation. Remember that. ADP and TXA2 set up, uh, they are set up as an autocatalytic reaction, leading to what? Leading to the buildup of enlarging platelet aggregates, the primary hemostatic plug. So thrombin binds to platelet receptors along with ADP and TXA2 causes further aggregation. This is followed by platelet contraction, creating an uh, irreversible fused mass of platelets consisting of the definitive secondary hemolysis, hemostatic plug. And so that basically covers hemostatic plugs and uh, hemostasis, primary and secondary hemostasis. Um, all right, well, that ends it. Thank you very much for listening, and you have a nice day.